A well executed interatrial septal puncture is very crucial for a successful BND. And the most important steps in the performance of a successful balloon mitral valvuloplasty is a well done transeptal puncture. And next critical step is the left ventricular entry across the mitral valve. One can perform uh, interatrial septal puncture in many views, as, you, as I've shown here, in AP view, in RAO view, in LAO view, or lateral view. But always try to verify in at least two views before you pump, once you puncture in the interatrial septum. And whatever views you are comfortable with, please stick to it. Though you can do in all four views. With respect to crossing the mitral valve, still it helps in facilitating the crossing the mitral valve in majority, 80 to 90 percent of the cases. Only in about 10 to 20 percent of the cases you need to resort to over the wire techniques, which I allude to. So this is the uh, way we actually maneuver the balloon. When you move the Ainoi balloon system with the stillet in, you get the bobbing moment when you reach the valve. That is when you have to give an anti-clockwise rotation, nearly two to two, three rotations on the stillet, and then guide your balloon with the left hand as you give a slight traction, backward traction to the uh, stillet. The 90% of the time you can maneuver the balloon with this technique using the uh, stillet. These are the technically difficult situations where one has difficulty in puncturing the interatal septum and crossing the mitral valve. I'll take you through some of the cases. So look at this case. There is a giant left uterine. In this case, the left uterine size was 9 cm. You can see in the left uh, second frame, the course of the catheter, virtually the eye, in fact, the IAS uh, made the right uterine like a crescent. And you can see the, uh, the course of the catheter. So here, what happens is the interatrial septum is pushed down. It's more horizontal. When you try to puncture here, it virtually dissects the two layers of the interatrial septum, it can cause dissection. What you need to do here is to give an extra bend to the broken roll needle and engage into the lower septum, stay in the septum before you go through the septum in such cases. When you do that, you, you look at the left atrium, it is so roomy. So here what we have done, as you can see in the second, the, the right, uh, we have actually used the moving sheet and uh, with the help of Bonin Sheep itself, we have uh, actually introduced the steel coil guide right, right, directly into the LV and we have uh, dilated the septum over that with the uh, steel coil guide right in the uh, LV and then balloon dilated successfully. So, the over the wire technique does help in such an area. This is another example of a larger array, but if you look at the first frame here, it is a low anterior. Puncture. When you have a low anterior puncture, it is extremely difficult to cross to the stillet. So what you need to do, the only way you can do is actually loop method. In this case, loop method also fails. Then what else you do? You exchange it immediately, take a JR catheter, and then float a thermo wire, that thermo wire, and then exteriorize it from the right femoral artery using this snare. Then you have the veno arterial loop in place. Once you have the veno arterial loop, what you can do, you can straighten out by pulling, giving traction on the venous side. And now we have introduced a catheter, and the catheter is in the left ventricle. And through the catheter, we are introducing the steel coil guide wire. And you can see that the loop and the wire is an insurance. So you, you have insured yourself that even if the balloon prolapses back, you can go over the same wire again. So next. The, over that steel coil guide wire, you to perform the procedure with that, you know, the wire loop is still in place. So, this is successfully balloon dilated and then you can take out the entire system. So, this is another way. So, in the routine cases, depending upon your puncture side, to facilitate entry across the mitral valve, you can shape the wire. Suppose you have a low puncture, then you give a shorter curve to the, uh, the stillet. If you have a higher puncture, you give a wide and high, uh, wider curve. And sometimes you may have to do an anterior bend like that to facilitate entry uh, into the LV. Subvalvar disease is a, uh, for example, I'll show an example. See, this is an impasse sign. The balloon is able to, we, we are unable to pass through that submitral stenosis, which is very severe. In this case, it was about 0.6. So it was, it was not going through. So what do we do now? In such a scenario, you float a wire through the submitral and then 
use a peripheral balloon and dilate it, the submitral apparatus, so that you can pass the INOE balloon and then perform the balloon uh, val valvotomy successfully. That is the post uh, uh, balloon valvotomy result. Similar scenario, unlike to the contra uh, contrary to the popular belief, lutein bashes is a very difficult scenario actually to cross the van. In this case, uh, in this particular case of lutein bashes, we tried through the ASD, but what happened was there is no anchoring of the balloon in the septum, interatrial septum, the balloon used to prolapse back into the right atrium. So what we did, we actually did a second puncture below the AST in the IAS, anchored the balloon and tried to pass. But even then, we were unable to pass because of the severe subvital stenosis. So what did we do? We passed a termo wire and then snared it out from the femoral artery. And then from the femoral artery, we used a peripheral balloon, facilitated, you know, dilatation of the submitral apparatus that facilitated passage of the balloon and then we successfully did the uh, uh, the commissioned autonomy. Uh, left atrial appendage clots offers another uh, challenge. Here the problem is the passage of the hardware which we use for BMV can dislodge the clot causing thromboembolism. So idea here is to avoid the clot. How can you do that? Over the wire technique is the best. And here you can see, we have shown here, you can pass that uh, steel coil wire directly into the left ventricle and do the procedure with a wire in place and, uh, throughout the procedure so that the hard waves do not move. For example, this was a roof clot, which we were, we were this was a roof clot, anyway above the level of the force of valis. So we did a low puncture and over the wire technique we did with a successful balloon dilatation and then continued the anticoagulation in that case. This is an example, you can see that there is an appendage clot. So what we do, over the wire technique and do the procedure over the wire successfully. Extracardia offers many challenges. But here you have to go with the left femoral venous approach, invert the image and then use the, the opposite of what you use, you use routinely and take the help of uh, pulmonary artery angiogram with opacification of the left atrium and which will guide you. To, uh, to puncture. For example, this was a situs inversus with uh, dextrocardia. He also had a bicuspid aortic valve with severe AS. So this is the uh, levo phase of left atrium, and you can see the, with the pulmonary artery angiogram, which facilitated puncture. In this case, I've used a LAO view. The, 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 I do both in PA, LAO and RAO views. In this case, I have taken the LAO because one centimeter below and behind that pigtail. It's a very good position to uh, puncture the septum. So once that done, again, over the wire technique to cross the valve and successfully balloon dilate. All because the uh, uh, patient also had a, a balloon, uh, the bicuspid aortic valve, we did that simultaneously, uh, the aortic valve balloon valvotomy also. So uh, the PA injection does help in uh, setting of dextrocardia. Anomalies of the IVC is where there is interruption of the IVC is another uh, situation where uh, you have a lot of difficulties. For example, in this case, there was an uh, interrupted IVC with uh, a zygous continuation. What we have done here is, okay, we, we actually we used a PA injection with a uh, levophase opacification of the atrium, which we uh, took it as a, a guide to puncture the interatrial septum and then uh, did a over the wire technique and then cross the valve and then successfully balloon dilated. Similar, uh, similar scenario, interrupted IVC with uh, a zygous continuation, as you can see, we have come from the jugular venous approach and in this case actually we have punctured the interrupted septum a centimeter above the level of the aortic sinus coming down in RAO view, then cross with a regular technique of the stillet and successfully balloon dilated. So the, you, you, in a given case, you can change your no, based on your based on the anatomy and the needs of a uh, of the particular patient. So in uh, interruptions of IVC, what we use is either we use a pediatric broken bone needle, which is about 45 centimeter, unlike the adult, which is 71 centimeters, or Endris needle, which is about 30 centimeters long. So this facilitates uh, easy functioning of the interatrial septum. And we also use 
uh, in every case, PA injections and opacify the left atrium to mark the the septal puncture site, and of course reduce the curvature on the puncture needle. And direction of the indicator of the needle should be seven or eight o'clock rather than the, the conventional three to five o'clock. And when we are actually maneuvering the balloon, instead of the anti-clockwise, we give a clockwise rotation to the stilet in the, these cases. This was an extremely rare case because the entire upper body venous uh, return was to the left coronary sinus with us and urism of the coronary sinus. And this uh, uh, male patient also had severe mitral stenosis which had to be treated. So the challenge in this case was we cannot go into the SPC because it is only the LSPC which is draining the upper body with a coronary sinus aneurysm. So we had to puncture the intraatrial septum with the needle within the right atrium. That was the so here, what I did was to stain the septum. As you can see, that is the non-coronary cusp of the uh, non-coronary cusp, the pigtail in non-coronary cusp. We have stained the IAS and then punctured and then confirmed the puncture. When you do this, it is not in the ideal location. Uh, crossing the valve is extreme. And through a second puncture, we completed the balloon valvotomy, got the LA pressure down. Now, we called the surgeons, surgeons, all four OTs were occupied, next two hours they were busy. So, we had to do something. So, what we did here was to try device closure. The first device which we took, it was not stenting the entire, both the wrench in the LA and RA. So, the first device which we put actually uh, prolapsed into the pericardium. It was between the LA and the pericardium. So what we did, we left that device stenting the, that rent in the left atrium, took another device between the pericardium and the RA and closed the second rent in the RA. So we could successfully close both the rents through devices and bail out this patient. The last part of the talk is failure of the balloon to deflate. In OE balloon, uh, when new, this phenomena is not seen. It is the reused balloon actually which weakens the layers and the integrity of the balloon is lost. When you have a, a rent in the inner layer, that is when the one-way check valve mechanism of the balloon comes into play and you have a phenomenon of failure of the balloon to deflate following balloon valvotomy. Valv this scenario, how to manage this? One, you apply continuous negative suction with 20 or a 50 cc syringe to deflate the balloon, right? If that doesn't work, you use saline and then inflate and deflate and see whether the contrast comes out and then if you're lucky it comes. Then or attempt to tenderize the balloon and see whether the balloon collapses. Other way is to pass the guide wire through the balloon inflation port. And if you, there will be kinks, if you can take away the kinks, then sometimes the contrast comes back and then the balloon deflates. Otherwise, hard end of the spring coil guide wire or coronary guide wire through the balloon inflation port and then you actually rupture the proximal balloon. But what is not recommended is rupturing by over inflating and withdrawing with RA forces is not recommended because it is injurious. So what we did in this case is to uh, actually through the balloon inflation port that is hard end of the spring coil guide wire deflating the balloon and the completely deflated balloon is taken out. To, to conclude, BMV is a safe and effective procedure over a wide spectrum. Transeptal puncture and crossing the mitral valve remain the most critical steps during BMV. Echo assistance is of paramount importance and facilitates the success of treatments in technically difficult scenarios. Knowing different methods of crossing the mitral valve is essentially in experienced operator. Thank you. Mm -hmm.